Hello everyone, Kevin here, and I want to welcome you to this Gobbler's Roost Adventure. Uh, today, um, oh, it's kind of a drizzly, rainy day out there, so I thought I'd spend some time in uh, my shop here. And today, I'm going to be making, I'm going to be making a cow's knee. Yeah, it kind of looks like a cow's knee, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess. Now, for those of you who don't know what a cow's knee is, a cow's knee fits over your lock and frizzing during inclement weather like it is today. It's drizzling out there today. So, fits over the top of your lock and frizzing keeps your powder dry which is kind of important if you're shooting a black powder flintlock like this so we're making a cow's knee today now this cow's knee oh I, ma I made it I made a pattern um, my good friend Brian over at Poverty Hill Adventures he lent me an old cow's knee that was made by uh, by a very good friend of both of ours, uh, Richard Zawacki. Um, and uh, Richard had given this cow's knee to Brian many years ago, and he's used it many times. And Brian knew that I needed to make one for my gun, so he lent me uh, this this cow's knee made by Richard Zawacki, and I, I uh, went and I made a pattern with it very easy pattern to make I just traced it I just traced it out as that and doubled it so from that pattern I uh, went and laid it out on some leather and traced it out and then it all it's to it is cut it out with a pair of scissors so this is what it looks like uh, once I had gotten it all cut out and uh it's just uh it's not any real heavy leather or anything like that it's oh about an eighth inch or so thick it's pretty flexible leather and uh i now i am going to take and start sewing and i'm going to use this artificial sinew um could use some real stuff if you wanted to I'm just for convenience I'm gonna sew it up with some artificial sinew so the first thing to do is to fold it in half and then I'm gonna sew the four edges together the four curved edges together and I'm just using a simple stitch just going over the top edge of the of it and to help me because pushing the needle through can be a little bit difficult to help me I have a block down here that I use and I just push the back end of the needle through and it helps me get this sewed up just the way I want it Now, as I said, the pattern I made, uh, I made it from an older cow's knee that Brian has. And he got it from a uh, man who's passed on now, uh, Richard Zawacki. We all knew him as Dick. He was a great guy. And uh, he was... A mentor to Brian um, he taught me a few things also um, Dick was into the the mountain man and the primitive bow stuff um, long before the internet 
and he learned a lot of it through trial and error. Um, or back in the old days, like uh, Brian and I used to and still do, is through magazine articles. That's how most of this stuff uh, was learned. But Dick was very generous. He always passed on the knowledge. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen it. Uh, I'll have to show it maybe another time. But um, I have a fur fox hat that I made many years ago. And it was uh, Dick Zawacki who basically taught me how to make the hat. He, he showed me how to cut the fur correctly, uh, gave me, a, you know, told me how to build a pattern and cut the fur correctly. And, well, as I say, he, he was one he definitely would pass on his knowledge, and that was knowledge that I certainly appreciated because uh, I made an awesome hat. I got a great hat out of the deal. So, in a way, this uh, project here, well, it's a, it's a present for a friend. It's a present for a good friend. But I'm also doing it in honor of a good friend. And... I sure am pre appreciative of having a friend like Richard Zawacki. Um, Richard, by the way, we all say, oh, I'd, if I die when I'm out fishing or if I die when I'm out hunting, I lived a happy life. Um, many of us have said things like that in the past. Well, it, unfortunately... But good for him. Richard uh, was out hunting when he got sick and passed away. Um, he lived a full life. He was uh, he was a good guy and a good mentor. And I'm making this cow's knee from a pattern I made from one of his le leather projects. Dick was uh, into many, many things. He did all sorts of leather work. Um, he was known as the as uh, the Aerosmith. He made arrows. He did lots of black powder uh, work, lots of archery work. Um, and many of his creations are um, prized by the friends that I know that have them. I personally have uh, a leather sheath. Oh, I'm sorry. Not, duh, goofed up my words. <laughs> not a leather sheath. I have a leather quiver <laughs> um, that I carry my arrows in at times when I'm, say I'm out shooting a 3D course or something like that. And oh, it's a quiver that I am very happy to own. Uh, and I use it in remembrance of my old friend. I am getting close to the end of this first one here. My stitching is terrible. <laughs> but it gets the job done, I guess. <laughs> Over the years, I've learned so many things. But it's all really just basic stuff like this. I suppose you could use oh, something like a speedy stitcher or um, some kind of awl, but this is simple enough, and I like to keep things simple. Almost. Right. 
right at the end, so why not knot it down right here? And there's the first edge. I'll get this other one done and we'll move on to the next step. And there we have it. There's both ends sewed up. Okay. Now the next step is this seam down the middle. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take and bunch it up, pinch it, and we'll start sewing there. Um, oh, I guess that's about oh, three-eighths of an inch. And we're going to go up on an angle, and so less and less and less. As you can see, the stitching doesn't go all the way to the top. Um, and what that does is that helps to make uh, the bend that we need in the cow's knee. So, the one I'm sewing, I'm going to start just generally right here in the middle. And I'm going to take... Fold it over like we talked, like we talked. Yeah, that'll work good. And you probably could pin it if you thought you needed to or wanted to. But I'm just gonna. Give it a shot. I'm going to eyeball it. Okay. You got to kind of hold it together a little bit more on when you're doing this part. Okay. There's one stitch. And again, your sewing doesn't have to be perfect if it zigzags all over the place like mine. <laughs> I guess it just gives a character. make a quick knot at the end and there's the first side you can see it's already starting to get that bend along the bottom there well now all I got to do is the second side
make a knot there at the end and cut it, cut it off. And there we go, that's what we have so far. Pretty close to what we got there. Now what we need to do is, uh, we're gonna trim this a little bit and we're gonna punch some holes. Put some holes in it right about there so that we can put some uh, leather ties on it. So we're going to trim it a little bit. Just round it off a little bit. Nothing too fancy. Now for the holes, as you can see, I got a little mark there, and I'm. I had these little punches here that I use. Um, if you need me, you could use something like this, or you could just go real primitive and use an awl. Use a bone awl if you want. <laughs> it's see. Oh boy. So I just punch a little hole in there. Punch a little hole in there. And there's my holes. Now all I need to do is uh, make some other thongs. I went looking through my stuff and I found this rough cut leather here and well I'll trim it up a little bit. Okay. So I cut four lengths and really all you gotta do is just tie them on. Cinch that knot down tight. There's one. Just a regular overhand knot is all I'm putting in there. Nothing fancy. Okay. So, we are basically done. What we need to do is turn it right side out. Stretch it out a little bit, but, well, I think we're pretty much done. Let's, uh, see how it fits. And then you take and tie these down right here. I think that does the job. Oh yeah, it fits even better that way. There you go, cow's knee. Now, there's only one more thing to do for this. And it needs some weatherproofing. So, I happen to have this good stuff right here. This stuff is awesome. You can use it for leather. You can use it for wood. Um, I put a bare fat finish on a bow once. And after just a couple of applications, that bow still beads water when it's out in the rain. So, take some of this bare fat. And uh, I'm going to rub it in all over the place. I 
said this bear fat is awesome stuff. You can use it for lots of different things. Um, you can cook with it too. Cook with it. You can treat leather. You can treat wood. Um, I imagine it makes a pretty good bomb. Um, for like an itchy area or for um, maybe a slight burn. Not, a, not I wouldn't. Don't know if I'd put it on a really uh, bad burn. Inside and out, get it totally waterproof. And there you have it. There's a cow's knee. As I said, it's a present for a for a good friend. I hope he likes it. I think he will. He's kind of into the black powder stuff himself. Um, I'm Kevin. I hope you like this this little gobbler's roost adventure. If you did, please subscribe, and also please hit the like button.